Seth, to understand physical reality, the capacity to predict using regularities that are discovered is really the core of, of what science is about. Some in physics today think we're reaching some limits about what is predictable, and not just because of the indeterminacy of quantum mechanics. So help me understand the concept of predictivity, computability in physics. Physics has been tremendously successful at predicting what's going to happen. So Newton's laws, when you apply them to the orbits of the planets, predict what's going to happen millions of years in the future to a very high degree of accuracy. Um, and I think physicists, after 400 years of being masters and mistresses of the universe, often have a slightly exaggerated sense of their ability to predict what's going to happen. So the basic idea of how prediction works in physics is you start out with something, let's say the solar systems, with the planets moving on their orbits in particular positions with particular velocities. Then you predict what's going to happen by applying a dynamical law, in this case, Newton's laws. And Newton's laws gives you a prediction of how the future orbits of the planets will evolve around each other, including their subtle influences on each other because of gravity. Um, so you start out with initial conditions and then a dynamical law that allows you to evolve those initial systems forward in time and predict what will happen. That's the form that basically all the laws of physics take. What could go wrong? Well, a lot actually. <laughs> so even Newton had some inkling that the motions of the planets are what we would now call chaotic. That is, the dependence of the behavior in the future is very sensitive to the initial conditions. So a tiny change in the position of Mercury now could make a big difference in where Earth is 100 million years the down so the so-called butterfly effect, that if a butterfly flaps its wings over here, there could be a hurricane a thousand miles away. Exactly. So that's one feature of the laws of physics that make things hard to predict. Not, not, a, not in principle impossible. Just indeed, because if you knew exactly, if you knew more precisely where right, Mercury right, was, right. then you would still be able right, to predict right, where right, Earth right. would be. A second way that the laws of physics give unpredictability is quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics has an intrinsically chancy nature. And it comes from the fact that in quantum weirdness, you have waves that correspond to things. Like you have an electron that can be here as a wave for electron over here, electron over there is wave over there, but the wave can be here and there at the same time, and that means the electron is here and there at the same time. And if you go in with a magnetometer and say, hey, electron, where are you? The electron will either show up here with probability one half or there with probability one half. And this is an intrinsic uncertainty that comes out of quantum mechanics. Many people don't like this. Einstein hated it, but you just got to suck it up because that's <laughs> the way it is. But there's something that's almost worse than these intrinsic uncertainties that come from the butterfly effect in chaos or the intrinsic uncertainty of quantum mechanics. And that comes from the very nature of the predictive process itself. So when we try to predict something like the motion of the solar system, we make a model. The model is a mathematical model in physics. And we're supposed to compute, given the initial conditions, what's going to happen in the future. So our models are effectively computations. They give prescriptions for how to perform a computation to say, if we start out this, in this state, what's going to happen in the future? And in our models, we make com computations, which in fact are just, you know, we tell the computer, okay, here's the initial states, here's the laws of physics. Uh, like, uh, do a computation and tell me what's going to happen in a few million times, will you? You know, yeah. that's, that's how computations work, right? They're, they're things that allow us yeah. to, to indulge our inner laziness. <laughs> But now there's a problem, because computation has in it an intrinsic unpredictability. Or maybe another way of thinking about it is an intrinsic unknowability. And this unknowability in computation is called uncomputability. It means that if you have a computer, and you ask the computer a question about something that itself is capable of computation, that the computer won't be able to give an answer. Unless it computes the whole thing. Sometimes it can't even give an answer. So for instance, if you ask the computer a question about itself, like what are you going to be doing like five minutes down the line, some substantial fraction of the time the computer will not be able to say, I'll be doing this, I'll be doing that. 
It comes from the nature of self-reference. Um, and a way to think about this is that if you're going to have a computer that's going to predict what some other system is going to do in you know a million years or five minutes in the future, the, the computer has to be in some sense more computationally powerful than the thing that's doing it, the thing itself. You know, every physical system has bits of information. To predict exactly what those bits are going to do, the computer has to have at least as many bits of information. You know, every time those bits of the system flip, we call that an op, an elementary operation. The computer has to perform at least as many ops, at least as many operations as the system itself. So if I'm going to predict what a physical system is going to do, five minutes hence, and I want my computation to tell me the answer in one minute, then my computer has to be more powerful from a computational standpoint than that, that system is. Isn't the fact that we have regularities like uh, compression in, in computer transmission so that we can, we can uh, process fewer number of bits to give the same information because there are certain regularities that happen very often? Yeah, there are always some regularities that we can predict. Like my, my wife, for instance, can always predict what I'm going to order in a restaurant, even though I myself have no idea what it's going to be. She knows, right? So this is a predictable physical regularity. Uh, so, and so there are some things that we're going to be able to predict because there are regularities. But there are other things that we won't be able to predict. So it's like, you know, it's like Abe Lincoln say, you can fool all the people some of the time, you can fool some of the people all the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. So the same is true of the regularities given by the laws of physics. The laws of physics allow us to predict some of the things that are going to happen all the time, and all of the things that are going to happen some of the time, but they don't allow us to predict all of the things that are going to happen all the time. Now, this brings us to a problem about predicting what's going to happen in the future. And the problem is that the universe itself is effectively a computer. The laws of physics support computation. If they didn't, I couldn't own a computer, right? So this is just like an empirical fact that the laws of physics support computation. So when we try to predict what's going to happen as a result of the laws of physics, then we're trying to predict what a, a computer is doing. Moreover, when we're trying to predict what the universe is doing, it's a humongous computer that's bigger than our computer <laughs> because it contains our computer. So our piddly computer that's just part of the universe will never be able to predict what all of the universe is going to be able to do. So you're saying that even though the system of the universe may be deterministic in some sense, that it's still non-computable. It's intrinsically predictable. And if I had a computer that was a lot bigger than the universe and operating faster than the universe, mm -hmm. like flipping bits more rapidly and had more bits, then it could predict what it was going to do faster. But in fact, ironically, if you actually look at the physical requirements for such a computer, that it would have to be denser than the universe and have more energy, which would mean it would undergo gravitational collapse and it form a black hole. hole. So it wouldn't work. Right. So in fact, if you look at something that has the number of bits of the universe that's trying to flip those bits, the universe is already contains the maximum number of bits and is flipping them as fast as is physically possible. Suppose we have more regularity. Support, suppose string theory is right. Or suppose we have some new, deeper theory of everything that undergirds uh, quantum mechanics. In principle, would, would your position still hold or, or would it be undermined? Oh, it would have to hold, right? Because, you know, if string theory predicts that we can't build computers, then string theory is wrong. <laughs> so luckily, string theory never makes predictions, so they're very cagey <laughs> in that way, so we won't know. <laughs> but, but if, uh, yeah, so any physical... So no matter how many regularities you can build into yeah. the world, you will still have a, a, a non-computability. Exactly, and that's because, you know, I didn't These, say that as a statement, I said it as a question because oh, that's, that's, not, a question. That's, that's, not, that's not obvious. <laughs> okay, so let me make it a statement. No matter how many regularities you build in the world, you still won't be able to predict stuff, right? right? Because again, the, the regularities that are predictable can't encompass all regularities that exist. So when we try to, you know, the fact that the world evolves according to physical laws, you start out with an initial state, it evolves in a regular fashion. That's a huge regularity. It means to understand what's going to happen in the future, you only need to know what's happening at one point in time and then know the laws of physics. That's a great you know, compression of the amount of information you need to describe what's happening. However, to unpack that information, that is to have a computation that goes from this initial description and evaluates what the consequences of physical laws will be, 
that is a computation which by necessity and by the very nature of computation must always be incomplete to some degree. Compare the case where there are no regularities versus the case where there are regularities. Is the computability at the same level? Oh, uh, that's a very interesting question you bring up, Robert. So, so I would call a case where there are no regularities a case where everything is just completely random, no pattern whatsoever. Either that or something's completely blank, like a string of bits zero 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 zero. Okay, that has still is a regularity, like all zero. But you don't know they're going to be always zero. Yeah, but it doesn't have doesn't it does have, have regularity. It's a very small amount of regularity. So interestingly, those situations where it's like just completely random, or where it's like all zeros, those are pretty easy to unpack. Those are situations where you can actually go from the shortest description to the whole thing in a straightforward fashion. With the all zeros, you just say okay. All zeros. Right, right. Just create the zeros, right? And it's going to be all zeros, so we can predict what's going to happen. In the case where it's completely random, the shortest description of a random bit string, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, etc. Though my, my students say I always construct the same random bit <laughs> string. So, but the shortest construction of that string, the shortest description of that string, it's is the, the string. string itself. Sure. So to go from the string itself to the string itself is easy. It's like here it is, okay? It may be a gajillion bits long, but there it is. So it doesn't, it's not hard to unpack. It's the more intricate things in between, which include actually the things that we tend to think of as interesting, like, you know, like human thought or literature, or for some people, you know, endless tweets are interesting, right? So those are the things that are actually harder to reconstruct from their simplest description. When you say harder, why harder? Because they require a significant computation to go from the simplest description to the thing itself. And amongst all the things, all the regularities out there, there are always regularities that are uncomputable, that to go from the shortest description to the thing itself could take an infinite amount of time. But the random sequence, you can't get more than a random sequence. Oh, you can't get more information, but that's random information. The, the interesting stuff is the partly ordered, partly random stuff. Now that's where the interesting stuff is going on. 